Wiki World Order presents Technocratic Party Posturing Observed in Natural Habitat. The first round of questions focus on monkeypox, and the second round focus on COVID related policies, including masks, vaccines, and anti vax accusations. It's too bad these candidates do not seem to understand some of the key philosophies and science behind the last two years. This is an unedited video clip from a New York Congressional Democratic debate. Thank you very much. Bridget is going to uh, ask our first question. Even as we continue to confront COVID-19, another public health risk is of growing concern. Governor Hochul and Mayor Adams both recently declared states of emergency due to the spread of monkeypox. The Federal Centers for Disease Control has reported nearly, nearly 5,200 cases across the country, with New York leading the nation with more than 1,300 cases. And that number is considered an undercount for overall lack of testing. So here we go again. Critics say we should have learned more from the years we spent dealing with COVID. Ms. Maloney, my first question is to you. Do you agree with critics who say President Biden dropped the ball on the monkeypox response? And what changes do you propose at the federal level to prepare for the next public health emergency? Well, uh, we can always do better. All of us could do better. He could have done a better job. But I have called and for him to declare a, a national emergency, too. That would uh, release more uh, resources, money, and help in this direction. I've also uh, written several letters on this to the mayor, the city, and others. Uh, we could uh, open up the national uh, uh, reserve and, and order them to produce more of it. We know that 80,000 new, new doses came, and some of them are coming to New York. Uh, so we are looking at it, we're on top of it, and we're gonna keep working to get more, more vaccines here in the city so that everyone who wants a vaccine can get it. We should probably set up a commission to come out with a, a whole study and a plan of how to be ready for the next, uh, uh, the next attack of the next uh, uh, pandemic. We know that we're gonna have future pandemics. I have written legislation, the Pandemic Risk Insurance Plan, trying to do that to help uh, have insurance in place for small businesses going forward. We need a comprehensive approach in many different areas. That's one area that I have legislation that I hope to pass. Thank you. Mr. Nadler, what ways would you propose overhauling an agency like the CDC to allow it to focus more explicitly on containing outbreaks like this? Well, I, see, I think the CDC can uh, do the focusing. I don't think that's the problem. Uh, the problem is that we don't have enough vaccines. Uh, we should have foreseen this. And uh, that's why I led a uh, delegation letter to the president uh, uh, urging him immediately to appropriate 100 to to dedicate 100 million more dollars uh, to the to uh, monkeypox vaccines. Do, do you think the risk posed by monkey monkeypox in this outbreak um, poses as serious a crisis for the world as we saw with COVID? No, I don't, because the transmission uh, seems to be by surface uh, contact instead of by aerosol. So it, it's, it's most likely not to spread nearly as, as, as far. Mr. Patel, even as the city has been able to acquire more vaccines, people have faced difficult challenges getting those vaccine appointments. How would you work to ensure people who need this vaccine are able to get it? Well, let's start with the facts that uh, I want to answer your question, which is the FDA in the last three years has proven to have failed. It's over a hundred year organization that has not been reformed. It needs to be. The European Union has separate food and drug administrations to speed up uh, drug uh, approvals at the same time as safeguard our food. The Centers for Disease Control need to be part of disease control. The FDA failed on baby formula. It failed on coronavirus. And the fact of the matter is there were one million doses of monkeypox vaccine waiting in a dangerous in Denmark uh, laboratory. Now, the European Union had inspected those vaccines and that factory and approved it, but the FDA dragged its feet on that inspection and only just recently gave that approval. We would have a million more vaccines here. Now, to distribute them here in New York City, we have learned the science proves that a single shot will give you about 70% production, just like the first COVID shot. Let's not make the same mistake again and have a morass of bureaucracy before we get shots in people's arms immediately. Both of these agencies need reform. We need reformers in office who are willing to ask the tough questions. And that's what I mean by a new generation of leadership with ideas and energy that have policy experience, 
on these kinds of things. Listen, the FDA does not need to be, um, uh, you know, the FDA is fully capable of cessation of smoking uh, oversight Thank the way it is. The CDC does not be do need to be doing that. The Thank CDC you, Mr. should Patel. be a disease control organization. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Moving on to COVID. For more than two years, the world has faced the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, more than 40,000 lives lost here in New York City. And while the virus, virus remains ever present in our lives, vaccines have played a vital role in mitigating the worst outcomes. Ms. Maloney, during your time in office, you raised questions about the connection between certain childhood vaccines and autism. Scientists have resoundingly said there is no link between autism and vaccines. Given the ongoing challenge posed by vaccine hesitancy related to the COVID-19 vaccine, did you spread misinformation about vaccines? Absolutely not. And you're referring to something I said in, in a uh, hearing uh, roughly 20 years ago. I support vaccines. I support the science behind vaccines. I have worked to bring millions of dollars, over $5 million worth of uh, vaccines to our city for free, free vaccines, free testing, free treatment. And I am the only member of Congress who has opened up two vaccine health care centers in underserved neighborhoods in my district, in Queensbridge houses and Astoria houses. And Queensbridge is, sub, is five days a week, Astoria houses is two days a week. This action has saved lives. Again, words, not actions. My actions speak for itself. I support vaccines. One of the first things I did when I went to Congress was vote for uh, the uh, ch children's vaccine program that, uh, that came forward with Donna Shalala, then Secretary of Health, and we brought it to, our, to my neighbors' hoods that I represent. So I, I, that is not my actions. And again, I believe I am the only congressperson in New York State for sure, but probably the whole country that has taken the extraordinary step of opening up two vaccine health care centers in the district that I'm proud to represent. To Unfortunately, clear, I lost them in redistricting. They, I lost the Queen section where these vaccine centers are. Thank you, Congresswoman. And, and just to be clear, you introduced legislation as recently as the 2015 and 2016 I didn't, I didn't Congress. introduce legislation. I never voted against vaccines. There was a bill that I went on that studied vaccines. Uh, if, if we are a country that can't even study anything anymore, uh, I regret that I ever asked a question about vaccines or, or, or supported a study on whether or not they're effective or not. Mr. Nadler, in Washington, D.C., all public school children over the age of 12 are required to be vaccinated against COVID to go back to school. Should that be the case in New York City? Yes, it should. Um, COVID is a very, COVID-19 is a very communicable disease. It's spread by aerosols, uh, which means that uh, it's very easy to spread, uh, much easier, for example, than monkeypox. And uh, without vaccines, uh, uh, you will have a lot of people dying, a lot of children dying. And uh, the purpose of the vaccines is it, it doesn't, the vaccines don't prevent COVID, but they do guarantee that if you get a case of COVID, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be mild. It's not going to result in, in, in inability to breathe. It's not going to result in death. And we must have uh, a, a mandate for, for vaccines. Mr. Patel, uh, we still have a mask mandate on subways and buses. When do you think that should be lifted? Uh, look, I'd like to first address the vaccine thing because I think that there is a factual issue at play here. In 2015, Congressman Maloney introduced a vaccine bill with Ron Paul, of all people. In 2005, she was at an anti-vaccine rally. In 2009, she was at an anti-vaccine rally with Jenny McCarthy. She introduced nine different bills. Even if we grant the simple idea that all we were doing was studying, the fact of the matter is that these were proven safe decades ago. Now, I actually think about it this way. Republicans today tell us climate change isn't real. They tell us that it might be sunspots, it might be the uh, solar flares, it might be the, the natural rhythm of the earth. But we have a causal link between climate change and carbon dioxide. So the burden, burden of persuasion should shift to the other party, not to this party, to continually try to prove a negative. It's a classic prove a negative problem. She fell into that trap. And in doing so, you can draw a straight line from that hearing and those bills to the one third of Americans who will not get a vaccine today because they think it's unsafe. And frankly, as a litigator and as a fellow lawyer, Jerry, you should understand that that burden of persuasion had shifted and you're still at the height of the pandemic and even as recently as two months ago, endorsed her for reelection. Thank you. Congressman Maloney, you have a chance to respond. 
Uh, my opponent is dredging up and recycling uh, charges in the last two elections that he threw at me repeatedly, spent millions on TV ads, uh, and I would say that it's not true. I did go on a bill that w was for a study, and that was 20 years ago. Look at my record. Have you, what have you done? Achievements speak louder than words. It's easy to attack people. It's much harder to open up health care centers that actually help people. It's much harder to pass legislation bringing millions of dollars back to help our city deliver this to every neighborhood. But some neighborhoods were not served. And that's why I'm proud of having opened up not one, but two medical health care centers saving lives by bringing vaccines, treatment, and testing to underserved communities that had a huge number of people dying from COVID. Thank I you, am Tom. proud of that achievement. Actions speak louder than words. I have never voted against vaccines. You, I have always voted for them, supported funding, supported programs, and actually done things to help people in our great city and Thank country. Thank you, Ms. Maloney. And Mr. Nadler, just briefly, you, since you were also mentioned, do you have an opportunity to respond? I'll, I'll just say that uh, <laughs> I have always supported vaccines, and uh, I don't think that uh, mis misinformation is useful. Okay, L let us uh, move on. Um, thank you, candidates. Um, we Check out Wiki World Order on the new domain, worldorder.wiki.